Hello and welcome to GodIsAGeek.com second video of the Capcom Arcade Collection. Uh, the Capcom Arcade Collection is a selection of uh, classic arcade games that they're building up over the, over the coming weeks. And this is the second video in this collection, this version of the collection, this section. Includes Ghosts and Goblins, Section Z and Gunsmoke. And we're going to look at uh, Ghosts and Goblins first. Now, if you grew up in the 80s, you probably grew up playing Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, or at least, you know, one of the variations of, of games that were very similar, that was based on Ghosts and Goblins, essentially. Gameplay is simple. Uh, as you saw in the beginning, the little... Uh, push to call it a cinematic, but the little opening sequence. Uh, demon appeared, took the, uh, the woman that you were with. Girlfriend, wife, whatever she is. Doesn't really need to be explained. You know, it's never explained in Mario, who Princess Peach is, so why should Ghosts and Goblins be any different? Basically, you just got to go and save her. Simplistic gameplay, simplistic sorry. But it's addictive, even now. The moment I uh, I put on Ghosts and Goblins in the arcade collection, when I, uh, I downloaded it and got it all ready to go, I, I couldn't stop playing. It was It's one of those games that I grew up playing. I... I emptied pocket money into arcade machines that, that included Ghosts and Goblins um, and it's the same now as you saw there when you uh, when you take damage you get uh, this section of the game you get two hits basically if you, you get hit the first time your armor all flies off and you end up running around not wearing very much uh, the second time you get hit if you're not wearing the armor, you, you die, and you have to go back uh, a certain a certain amount. There's no, there are checkpoints. They're not signposts in any way. You won't see you hit a checkpoint or anything like that. You, you've just got to basically, if you die, you've got to hope that you hit one. Otherwise, you'll be going back further than you probably want to go. That's the first section done. As you can see, there's the six sections in Ghost of Goblins. Uh, whether you get that far, that's. Uh, that's up to how good you are, ah, I suppose, at the game. There you go, the first, uh, first hit is taken. I'm running around practically naked, hoping that I don't get hit again. Once you, once you do get hit that first time, though, usually within a couple of seconds, if you're hitting enough enemies, if there are enemies to kill, they will drop armor again. So you're not going to be uh, running around for long without armor. With hoping that you're not going to get hit again but you, know, you have got to be careful at that point something you saw just then as well is uh, you, the iconic weapon of Ghosts and Goblins is the, the, like, the javelin the um, jousting pole that he's thrown around but uh, there, there are ways to pick up other weapons most of the time the enemies drop them sometimes you'll see them uh, flying around the, uh, the top of the screen with the uh, with uh, little pots that you, if you kill them they'll drop the pot and then there's sometimes going to be something there sometimes it's a collectible that just gives you more more points like a coin or you know a piece of treasure of some description it just gives you more points uh, sometimes it'll be a weapon and then if you're in the position that I am now where you haven't got the armor you hope it be that the armor so yeah, if you, if you were, were Thinking that the game might be easier than you remember, if you thought, thought that it was it was difficult just because you played it when you were younger or something like that. Now the game is actually hard at, at points. This is the the second stage of six stages, and it's already not easy. I mean, it's easier than it gets later in the game, but it's yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's typical old school stuff. It's all about uh, knowing where the enemies are going to path and. Anticipation, uh, and just a lot of it is just praying that you, that you know what you're going to be doing. Let's try and get past this uh, this house full of ogres for the third time. Hopefully, get a little bit further. The one thing I did mention earlier that there are checkpoint systems, but they're not close to each other. They're not close to each other, but they're not signposted either. You won't know that you passed one. So that's it. Even though I, uh, on previous playthroughs, have gotten past 
this house part before if you if you die on the uh, end boss that we'll see in uh, in a sec in a while in the uh, the end of the section boss not not the end boss really it's just the end of the stage if you die on him or them if there are two um, you'll go back to be before this maze house thing. So yeah, it's one of those games where you've got to be careful as to what you're doing and keep an eye on everything that happens. This part is one of those uh, annoying parts. If you if you not if you don't remember how to play an old school game in terms of the platforming, then uh, it, it can be potentially annoying. Basically, there's no way of um, moving your character once you've jumped, so you have to ju anticipate the jump before you even press the button. You can't uh, under... Basically, you can't... You can't just press jump not knowing where you're going to land. You can't adjust the jump mid-air like you can in games nowadays. Or you can even with, even with Sonic. The, la the latest Sonic is one of the things that people have got annoyed at. There's no, uh, there's no way to jump, to uh, modify your jump between the air. You're just going to have to hope that, uh, that you made the jump correctly the first time. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's not, it's not too bad. That's the end of the uh, second stage done, and uh, the end of Ghosts and Goblins for now. So the next game we're going to have a look at is Gunsmoke. Now I'd never heard of this game before. But when I played through it, I was happy that I that I got a chance to experience it and it's it's kind of something that that you that you'll see a lot in the Capcom Arcade collection. Unless you grew up playing Capcom Arcade games, which there's every every possibility that a lot of people did. If you maybe grew up in the if you're a child of the 80s and you were young when some of these games came out, I mean these were 1985. So I suppose if you didn't happen to see the arcade cabinets, you wouldn't, you weren't, you know, when when you, I mean when you were a bit older, like in the early 90s, you might have seen the arcade cabinet for something more popular like Ghosts and Goblins, something like Gunsmoke you may not have seen before, and getting the opportunity to play them, Gunsmoke is is a fun game. So getting the chance to play it without having to find uh, an arcade cabinet that, that holds it is, uh, is a nice little treat and it's something that shows the saleability of the Capcom Arcade collection. Uh, in, they're coming out in packs and there might be one, like this pack where um, I'd heard of Ghosts and Goblins in Section Z but I hadn't heard of Gunsmoke. It, it, there's every chance that that one game that you haven't heard of is, some, is going to be a hidden gem that you just happen to have not played before. So it's, it's still worth worth playing and worth worth having a look. The Gunsmoke, as you can see, is similar to uh, a lot of games that we saw. We saw a couple last week, Avengers and 1943, where it's the, the screen scrolls down from the top. You just got to attack all the enemies that you see in, in order to get to uh, the end of stage boss which you saw the uh, the wanted poster for him at the beginning of the, uh, of the game of the stage there are plenty of enemies to shoot some of them have got little abilities a little typical capcom power up there same icon as it have seen in other games and this is the end boss now the end of stage boss can't shoot him when he's laying down you have to wait for him to stand up and then pop him in the face yeah constant stream of enemies to try and uh, try and take you down but you just avoid the bullets like a typical bullet hell game concentrate on taking him down then it's not really that much of a problem and the bounty that you get is uh, added to your high score obviously a lot of these old arcade games are, uh, are all based around high score and seeing if people can beat each other's high score I was quite impressed when I was playing it for a game that came out in 1985. I was quite impressed with that graphic of the of the train going up the left hand side there. I, I wasn't expecting something like that. It's a, it's a very good looking game for 1985. I mean, even even the uh, the enemy models, the well sprites, 
are, uh, are quite well done for, for what's a relatively early game in terms of arcade machines and arcade games. Plenty of pickups to collect. I keep picking up the uh, horse because every time I see it I think it's a unicorn and everything is made better with unicorns. That's just a fact. One weird thing about this game on uh, on the Xbox controller is that you can see that sometimes I can, I'm shooting it right diagonally and then other times left diagonally and most of the time straight up. Uh, that is dependent on which button you're pressing on the controller, not where you're pointing, say, the, the right analog stick. Which is what you'd expect from most games like this. You'd expect to just push the analog stick in a certain direction and have the gun go in that direction. This isn't like that. You have to press the uh, the X button. Will will put shoot the bullets in the top left, uh, in the diagonal left. B will do it in the diagonal right, and then A will fire straight up. So it takes a little bit of getting used to just to work. Cause the way that we, most people have played games recently is that you use the right analog stick, and it, it takes a little bit of, uh, of getting used to just to, to not use the analog stick, to use the buttons to change where you're shooting. But once you once you get once you get used to it, it's not it's not that big of a deal, and most of the times you'll be just shooting straight up anyway. The second boss down. Moscow, more prizes, and that's gun smoke. So the third game and final game is Section Z. Section Z. I don't know. It's probably called probably called Section Z, but uh, I'm British. Section Z. This is a, uh, a side-scrolling shooter. Uh, it's just it's. It reminded me when I first started playing it of an Infinite Runner. Basically, you can see in the top left-hand corner the E J O T Z. There are all the different sections of the game, and the and the E J O T Z are the, the like main stage ends. So once you get to E, there'll be a, a a boss of some sort, and then once you beat him, you'll be on to the next section. So. You can see the little pips that you're getting up to there, the, the little areas within each section, the little like minor sections. And it does say at the end, once you, so I'm on the first pip now, when I get to the second one, it will, there will be a checkpoint there, so if I, if I die in that section, I'll go back. I've only got nine lives, so it's not unlimited lives, you know, typical arcade game, you're expected to pump money into it all the time. You can see that it says B on the bottom there as well, indicating which section I'm in. A lot of the time, you won't notice that. It does say in, in every section what section you are in, but a lot of the time you concentrate. There's that much stuff happening on the screen at one time. So many enemies to concentrate. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> so many enemies to concentrate on, coming from both the right hand side of the screen and the left hand side. So if you if you were trying to take comfort in the fact that maybe only enemies would be coming from the right hand side of the screen, no. Nope. Enemies will be coming from the left hand side of the screen as well. And then in later levels you'll be going up and down, the enemies will be coming from the top and bottom. It's not a side scrolling shooter in the sense that we you'd normally expect in, in that you just stick on the left hand side of the screen, enemies come at you from the right. So you've got to be ready for enemies to come from the back as well. There we go. Right on cue, enemies from the back. So you can uh, use uh, the Xbox controller to turn around. It's not again, it's not using the analog sticks to turn around. Left analog stick moves your character around. Um, X moves the, uh, alternates between which ways you're firing. So if you tap X, it'll, it'll turn around. Tap X again, it'll turn back around to the normal way. Um, and then pretty much any of the other buttons uh, fire. So if you, if you want to fire using the triggers, you can do. If you want to fire using just smashing A button, that's, that's all well and good. You can do that if you want. Whatever feels comfortable. I mean, at the end of the day, the whole point is to get as far as you can. So, having the option to play in whichever way you feel comfortable doing is going to enable you to get as far as you can. So, this is the E section, end of E. So, it's the end of stage boss to do with E section. One of the most impressive parts of this game I found is that in most 
games, well, in, in Ghosts and Goblins and in uh, Gunsmoke, when you got to the end of the stage, you went to a loading screen, you went to a transitional phase, where in Ghosts and Goblins it would show you where you were on the map, in uh, Gunsmoke it would show you your next target, the next wanted poster, which is, it works for those games, but I like the fact that in Section Z, Section Z, whatever, um, there's no transitional phase. I mean, you when you get to the end of Section E, or when you get to the start of Section E, uh, whichever way it chooses to decide it, um, there's no transitional phase, you just get told that you're going up to the next section, now you're going towards Section J. There's no transitional phase, you just, you just get on with it. Which I kind of like, it, it, it adds to the element of... Um, that's the high score just trying to see how, how far you can go it adds to the uh, to my original feeling of an infinite runner it feels it plays like an infinite runner nowadays you've essentially seen how far you can get you know you, you play subway surfers or you play temple run or any of the multitude of, of infinite runners that are out for ios now and it will be essentially the same gameplay as, as this from 1985 you know, essentially just seeing how far into the game you can get before you die um, when you die you're given a high score that high score you, you try and get beaten by your friends or friends try and beat your high score there's a little pickups as well S and P uh, in the top right hand corner of the screen you can see the power and speed indicators um, they will fill when you uh, collect those S and P, P being for power and S being for speed obviously. So you want to uh, try and not die, because if you die those will go back down. So once you've built them up you want to try and survive, do do very well. They'll uh, they'll get knocked down by one when you uh, when you die. So I've now got two, two power, no speed. And I've got no way to pick him back up because I'm at the boss now. At the end stage boss, so there's no uh, there's no power or speed spawning. So every time I uh, I die, I make it slightly more difficult for myself. There's also no hint system as well. So when I was playing this part, I was confused as to what to do because I knew I was shooting him in the face, uh, but he wasn't taking any damage. So I just decided to move around, avoid him as best I could, and eventually split up, and that's when you can uh, destroy this one. Which was a nice little uh, surprise, but it, it wasn't easy to figure out. But that's uh, Section Z, and that's the Capcom Arcade Collection for this week. Remember to check back for more videos on godzageek.com, and for the next Capcom Collection.